Hello everybody, this is John with Christian Country Living. I hope you're all doing very, very well. Welcome. Come on in, come on in. We're about to start another exciting study of God's Word, the Bible, based on the book, Bible Readings for the Home. And it poses questions that the Bible gives the answers to. And our topic today is, why is Bible prophecy given? But before we start, as always, let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much that we can study your word. We thank you um, that we are going to learn about Bible prophecy and why you gave it to us today. Um, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would be present so that we could understand and apply your word to our lives. Thank you for sending Jesus to save us. And we pray um, that he will be present through the Holy Spirit as we study. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, here we go. Prophecy. Why given? If you need to pause to look up the Bible verses, I would greatly encourage you to do that. And then just uh, hit play when you're ready for me to start talking again. <laughs> I hope you hit play again. Hope you don't pause me forever. But it's up to you. Number one. <clears throat> Why were the sacred writings given? Romans 15.4. Hold on, I need to throw on my headphones. I gotta make sure that we're actually getting signal here. There we go, there we go. All right, why were the sacred writings given? <laughs> Romans 15 verse four. I knew something wasn't right there. Romans 15 four, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So those things that were written aforetime or ahead of time, uh, those give us hope. When the Bible predicts something or it says something is going to come to pass and it comes to pass months or years, <clears throat> excuse me, or often hundreds of years later, that gives us great confidence that the Bible is true and that we can trust its teachings, not only for prophecy, but in every area of our life. Number two, by what means is all scripture given? 2 Timothy 3.16, this is the first part of that verse. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. For what is it profitable? Last part of the same verse. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And we're going to... So scripture is given by inspiration of God. So all of scripture, all of what we have in the Bible is 100% inspired. Number four, we're going to keep moving because these will all tie together here in a minute. 2 Peter 1.21 For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So, in other words, um, the prophecies you read in the Bible, that's not just, you know, the prophet's opinion. Isaiah and Jeremiah and, you know, Daniel, they didn't just decide, hey, I have an idea of how I think the future is going to turn out. I think I'll write it down. No. It says that it came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So it is the Holy Spirit that inspired Isaiah and Jeremiah and Daniel and John the Revelator and all the other biblical prophets uh, to either write down uh, what they said. We would call that a canonical canonical prophet. Um, their works are recorded. Their words and works are recorded in the canon of scripture. And then uh, you have non-canonical prophets where um, their deeds are not uh, necessarily written down in scripture, but they still spoke for God. Uh, there's another group of prophets, and maybe I'm getting them mixed up here. Um, just a little side note, by the way. Um, there are prophets whose uh, they, they are recorded of like what they did in the Bible, but they didn't have like a book that they wrote or anything like that. But it's kind of recorded like, you know, Jehorah, what, you know, whatever his name is, uh, said to, you know, this person, 
you know, go and do this. This is what's going to happen. Well, that person is still speaking for God. And um, the word prophetes, where we get the word prophet, actually means mouthpiece. So a mouthpiece for God. So um, whether a prophet's words are written down in Scripture directly or not, they're still 100% inspired. Okay. Not sure why I went down that little rabbit trail, but okay, here we go. Uh, if you're still with me, thank you. You're so gracious. You're so kind. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> number five, what is the Lord able to do regarding the future? Isaiah 42, 9. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. So the Lord knows the future. For the Lord, the future is the present. He lives in all areas of time, past, present, and future. And it's like nothing to God, I think. You know, it's just, he's God. So, you know, he can know everything at once, if that makes any sense. So the Bible's telling us, like, hey, I'm, I'm predicting these things, but for God it's not a prediction because he knows it's going to be fact already when he says it. Number six, how far reaching is God's ability to reveal the future? Isaiah 46, 9, same chapter, just a few, or no, same, same verse, actually, 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God. It skips down a little bit. And there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not done or not yet done. Again, God is a God of the future, of prophecy. Number seven, let's keep moving along here. To whom does God reveal the secrets of his fu of the future? Hmm, good question. Amos chapter three, verse seven. Amos three, verse seven. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he reveals his secret unto his servants, the prophets. All right, very key point here. God is not going to uh, bring on, uh, shall we say, um, there's a lot of events that are happening and are yet to happen regarding Bible prophecy in our future that will like, very likely unfold while we are still alive. Um, and God is saying here, I believe, that he's not going to do any of that without revealing it to his servants, the prophets, so that we can know uh, where, where we're at on the prophetic timeline and have a pretty good idea of what to expect. And God has done that uh, through his word, especially in the books of Daniel and Revelation, have a lot to say about the times that we are uh, living in, and uh, there's been a lot of things in those books that were predicted in the past that have been fulfilled that gives us confidence that the rest of those books that have yet to be fulfilled are very much going to be fulfilled to the letter. Number eight, to whom do these things which have been revealed belong? Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord, our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us, and to our children forever. So there are certain things that are secret that only God knows and only will ever know. And for whatever reason, he has chosen not to reveal those to mankind, to humankind. But it says those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. So uh, there are many things that God has chosen to reveal through his word, the Bible. And we are able to understand uh, those things through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's very key. We, we always, that's why we always pray um, before we study that the Holy Spirit will be present as we study. Because we can't understand a lot of these things through our own human wisdom. Number nine. What testimony did the Apostle Peter bear concerning his experience on the Mount of Transfiguration? 2 Peter 1.16 For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Let's keep going. Verse 18, When did he say he saw the majesty of Christ and heard the voice from heaven? And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Okay. 
Number 11, how does Peter emphasize the reliability of prophecy? Also verse 19, and we have the word of prophecy made more sure. Or in the revised version, it reads, now more confirmed, according to Boothroyd's translation. That's a little editor's note here. And uh, the editor says, Every fulfillment of prophecy is a confirmation of the truthfulness and reliability of prophecy. Number 12. What admonition is therefore given? Oh, again, staying in verse 19. They really like this verse. Whereunto ye do well that you take heed, and as unto a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Okay, so we would do well that we take heed. It says, unto a lamp shining in a dark place. Remember, the Bible interprets itself. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And Jesus also is the light of the world. So we need to take heed unto Jesus and the word that he's given us. Number 13, what has ever been the theme of God's prophets? 1 Peter 1, 9, and 10. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So that's, that's one of the themes, our salvation. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Number 14, moving right along here. Whose spirit inspired their utterances? Verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. So the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, we could also call it the Holy Spirit. That is uh, what testified beforehand, so it predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. So yes, that definitely happened. Those books um, were written long before Jesus walked this earth and predicted uh, just so many things. Uh, look up on your own time Dr. Peter Stoner and some of the calculations that he did regarding the chances of one man fulfilling all of the uh, prophecies that were predicted that the Messiah would fulfill, and it's just astronomically high. So it gives us confidence that, uh, yeah, that Jesus was who he said he, he was, and it had to be a divine thing. Um, I'm getting a little bit off here. <laughs> uh, number 15, uh, this one's coming from Matthew twenty four fifteen. In what prophecy... Did Christ recognize Daniel as a prophet? Okay, now this is important because Jesus is saying here, he's referencing Daniel. So obviously Jesus believed in uh, the book of Daniel that uh, Daniel was inspired to write by the Holy Spirit. And um, this is not just a prophecy that he's telling the disciples about, but it also, as we're going to find out later, probably not this Bible study, that uh, Matthew 24 has a dual fulfillment for our time as well, for the end. Matthew 24, 15. So Jesus said here, When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Jesus called Daniel a prophet, so for those that say, oh, the Old Testament, we don't need any of that. Jesus was constantly quoting from the Old Testament. That was the only Bible they had back then. I mean, they had the scrolls, right? Uh, there was none of this New Testament. You know, people say, well, I'm a New Testament Christian. I'm New Covenant. Well, Jesus and his disciples later on when they wrote their books were constantly quoting from the Old Testament and showing how those things pertained to what they were talking about. Um, and they did that for everyday things and for prophetic things as well. So it'd be very, very foolish to try to throw out the Old Testament and say it's irrelevant. It doesn't apply to us anymore. That's, that's just incorrect. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, so let's start reading it uh, over again because I keep interrupting myself, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso reads, let him understand. And 
they kind of cut that off in the middle of the sentence there, but I guess we'll read verse 16 on a future study. <clears throat> Number 16, to what time were the prophecies of Daniel as a whole to be sealed? Daniel 12, 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. There's a lot in there, and I really wish I could get into it now, but uh, we're not going to. But um, a lot of uh, certain portions of Daniel were sealed up until the time of the end. And now you're wondering, well, how do we know if we are in the time of the end? There's a difference between the time of the end, which is the, uh, the era or the... Um, The overall, um, not era of time, I guess I said that. Um, and then there is, uh, so there's the time of the end. So we're living in the time of the end, I believe. But then there is the end of time, which is like, okay, we're not here anymore. We're in heaven, you know, because everything is ended. Time is ended, basically. <laughs> Sorry, that took a while to get out. Hope you understand. what. That's why we ask the Holy Spirit to be present, because sometimes I don't speak very clearly, so... I apologize. Um, so yeah, a lot of those prophecies were sealed up to the time of the end. Spoiler alert, um, we are very much in the time of the end right now, and we'll talk about that later. Number 17, what reassurance or what assurance was given by the angel that these prophecies would be understood in the last days? Daniel 12, 9 and 10. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. That kind of reminds me of when uh, people ask Jesus, why do you speak in parables? Why don't you just say what you're going to say? Because um, Jesus knew that those who were sincerely trying to do the right thing and follow after God, they would understand the parables, the teachings, but those who were insincere, they would not understand the teachings. It says here, but the wise shall understand. So I think that's sort of uh, what it's talking about. <clears throat> Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. What is the last book of the Bible called? <laughs> and I like to show this to people. Um, these are the first five words of the book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Stop right there. Revelation. Revelation means the revealing or the unveiling, basically. And some people say, ah, oh, you're not supposed to study the book of Revelation. It's a, it's a closed book. It's a sealed book. You know, we can't understand it anyway. And they, I've had people, when I sold uh, Christian books door to door, you mention the word revelation, and they just kind of back up like you're trying to offer them a snake or something. But God means for these prophecies to be understood, or else why would he have uh, people put it into the, the Bible if it's not important for us? Um, so it is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Yes, there are a lot of prophetic events, but Jesus is at the heart of all of these prophecies. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. Um, and the verse goes on that he may shortly show unto you the things that... Uh, which must come to pass. I hope I'm not misquoting that. Check me out. Don't believe what I say because I say it. Check it out in God's word for yourself. Number 19. Last one. What is said of those who read, hear, and keep the things contained in this book? Revelation 1 verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. So there is a blessing for those who study and apply and understand the prophecies contained in the book of Revelation. So there you have it. It's nothing to be afraid of. We are intended by God to study and understand it, and it has a blessing for us. So please do not be afraid of the book of Revelation. There's a lot of scary things in the book of Revelation, but the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is of the world. And we know that we overcome the world by our faith, or rather Jesus' faith living inside of us. Hey, thanks so much for joining me. This has been John with Christian Country Living. I want to encourage you to uh, continue reading the books of Daniel and Revelation and all of the prophecies of the Bible. They have very, very important information. 
uh, for our time. And we are now entering into um, some of those things that are written there. And we do not need to be afraid when we see all of this chaos in society. It is, it is, it does make us afraid, but we don't, we, we know how it's going to end and we know the general direction that it's going to go. And God has also given us a lot of details as well. So I want to encourage you to study that. Until next time, I just want to pre- uh, tell you and your family to pray, plan, and prepare. And we'll see you next time.